Coming up on the sports news, we are going to go onto the ice. Oregon Ice Arena. Ben Cohen's going to be here. We are also going to talk some golf and Stoughton sports as well. But up next, the headlines brought to us by the Red Zone in Madison. Check them out online at redzonemadison.com. Headlines next on the sports news. Hello and welcome to the Sports News, your 30-minute look into the tackles, hits, checks and dunks that make up the local sports scene. I'm your host Rich Reynolds and let's hit the ground running. The boys of summer have been in full swing and on the prep level, that means state tournament time. Locally, three teams made it through to quarterfinal play in Division I. That was Middleton, Sun Prairie and Janesville Craig. In the D2 semifinals this week, Lodi advanced to play in Fox City Stadium. And in D3, it was Prairie Duchene and Marcusan that advanced. The finals will end up being played on Thursday in Grand Chute. Well, the MLB draft doesn't get quite the hype of the NFL draft, mostly because you won't see most of the top picks for a few years as they fine-tune their skills. Some local talent, however, got picked as Ben Rortvet, a catcher from Verona and Team Heat, who, by the way, has also been a guest on this fine show, went in the second round and 56th overall to the Minnesota Twins. Now, some publications had Rortvet as the best catching prospect in all of baseball. Now, the Twins didn't stop there with local catchers, taking former Lodi Blue Devil Matt Byers in the 24th round. Well, state titles were crowned in girls softball on Saturday over at Goodman Diamond. In Division I, Stevens Point won its ninth state championship, defeating Watertown 16-4. The D2 winner was New Berlin West, D3 it was Laconia, and in D4, Thorpe won its first state title. In girls soccer, it was Oregon advancing to state after Makina Fanning knocked in an overtime winner over Milton. Oregon will face Pulaski in the D2 semis on Friday. Other teams in the bracket include Madison West in D1 and Bellevue, Belleville New Claris in D3. Off the pitch and onto the courts as boys tennis wrapped up their tournament on Saturday with Madison Edgewood taking the boys title in Division 2 with a 4-3 win over Notre Dame. In Division 1, the Middleton boys went far but finally fell in the semifinals to Marquette. Seven to nothing. And the winds just keep piling up for the Madison Radicals as on Saturday night in Bree Stevens Field, the Rads won their 29th straight home game. Yeah, 29, beating the Detroit Mechanics 37 to 19. The Radicals got a huge performance from Seth Meyer, who had four goals, four assists, and three blocks. The win pushes the Radicals to 9 0 on the season and two and a half games up in the Midwest Division. For more information and all the 411 on our headlines, make sure you check out these fine websites. Stick around, we have a jam-packed show this week. We are talking baseball, softball, golf, and more. That's all next, here on the Sports News on Channel 57 Sports. And back on the Sports News as we get to talk a little bit about what's going on on the ice right now, I know it's hot outside, but let's go inside and chill out a little bit. Talk with Ben over at the Oregon Ice Arena. Ben, how you doing? I know uh, you got some big happenings going on now. The Players Edge Pro Shop, that's all new. Talk to us about that. What's that all about? Well, Rich, good to see you again. Um, yeah, so Players Edge. So Larry Clemens and I, so Larry's my partner in on ice promotions. We've been talking for the last couple of years about do we want to be in retail? Do we not want to be in retail? And as of about a month ago, we said, no, we don't want to be in retail. And then we met this guy, Kyle Walgren, who came to us. He's a big lacrosse guy in the area, does custom string, has his own custom lacrosse company. And he's like, hey guys, if you want to be in retail, I'll run it for you. So we kind of flip flopped and, you know, from a month ago to now, now we have two pro shops. Um, our main one's in the Sun Prairie Ice Arena, um, Player's Edge. And, you know, it's the focus on hockey and lacrosse and, and really what we want to do is we just we want to change the market a little bit and, and make it an experience like you come into our pro shop. You know, we have couches, we have tables. Um, just come hang out, watch TV, and maybe buy a few things. Nice, yeah. I was going <laughs> to ask you too because what kind of sets it apart from other pro shops so that people can go to? I mean, why go to yours over somebody else? Well, so we want to change it. So typically, you know, we saw this with in the golf market. You know, I was big in golf for a while. 
um, local pro shops just, they didn't make it. So they didn't make it because the big box stores like Dick's came in, they, they wanted to do their, you know, massive, you know, golfs, you know, their massive golf stuff. Um, so really with that, we're like, okay, so we're not gonna be able to compete with the Dicks, the hockey giants, um, just because they, they buy so much. So what we wanna do is we wanna take more of like a country club feel to it, where it's a lot more intimate and a lot more like custom ordering. So we're gonna have memberships, so you can be a member of the pro shop and on ice promotions, more or less. And with that membership, you get the custom order right from the catalogs, you know, everything. We place the orders, we do the custom apparel, and there's a very deep discount for being a member. And those discounts will allow us to be competitive and actually beat out the prices of all the other stores you know, in this market by far. Wow, that's a, that's a great idea and definitely sets you apart. How about what's going on over at Oregon Ice Arena? We got about 30 seconds to catch up with you on what's going on over there. Yeah, so just over there, I mean, continually building. Um, you know, we have our upstairs done, which I've talked about a lot, and you know, the, our mezzanine. And then actually our project right now is we're getting ready to put in a grill. So at Sun Prairie, which is, I talk about a lot also, um, they have Willie Ties, which is a full-on restaurant. Uh, we want to do kind of a miniature version of that in Oregon. Um, grill, so you can have hamburgers, sandwiches, you know, french fries, all the stuff for the kids. And then really make it, you know, more birthday party friendly, more corporate event friendly, where we can do the catering ourselves and we don't have to outsource. Sounds like great stuff, Ben. I hope to check it out. The grill over there and, of course, the new Pro Shop Player's Edge going on as well. Ben, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Yep, appreciate it. Let's go out to the diamond right now and bring in the head coach of the Madison East Per Golders, Dana Rasmussen, who heads up the uh, softball team out there, and one of my favorite guests. <laughs> <laughs> we love having you on, Dana. And, uh, you know, uh, before when we talked to you, I think the season was just getting started. Mm -hmm. Now the season's over. I know you guys had some high hopes going into the season. How did the season finish up for you? Well, like you said, we had a lot of high hopes going into the season. We lost only three seniors last year, so we had high hopes. The downside is that things don't always go as planned, and we ended up the season in conference eight and ten and overall nine and twelve so how did your team end up adapting i think there were a lot of like injuries on your team weren't there there were unfortunately and all happened at one time in the middle of the season and dealing with that is not easy the good news is is that we have a lot of people that can play multiple positions and they were able to fill in when needed well, even in a down year and when there is some, you know, injuries and stuff mm -hmm. like that and the record isn't what you want, there's usually some bright spots too. Uh, talk about that uh, a little bit, you know, bright spots offensively and defensively for your school. Offensively, we're known by other, from other schools that we're great hitters, and we showed that early on. One of the games, we had 22 hits, which was a huge confidence booster for our kids. Uh, defensively, we didn't play as soundly, which adds to the loss column, but we did have you know, a couple outfielders that took away some extra base hits. We had a catcher that threw out 17 out of 23 would be base stealers, and that led the big eight. Wow. Uh, one thing that can't be shown on statistics, though, is the resiliency that these kids have. With all of the injuries at one time, it's not easy to overcome, and they did it very well. Yeah, and that's and that's great, and especially, you know, mm -hmm. having some seniors and returning players that can overcome, too, yeah. uh, definitely helps. So uh, talk about the postseason, then, if you could. Where did you guys end up? We were seated number eight in our sectional. We hosted Madison La Follette in the first game. We won six to five in extra innings on a walk-off single by our lone senior, Jesse Inman. So that was a huge moment for her and for us and ones she won't soon forget. Our regional final game was at Verona. We ended up losing eight to four, but we did out hit them. We just didn't string them all together. Yeah, well, yeah. sometimes they, you gotta take one like that. So mm -hmm. how about all conference nominations? Anybody get nominated? Uh, well, overall in the conference, we have a lot of great players. It was amazing to see at the end of the season meeting how many players were actually hitting above 400, which not easy to do. Uh, we did have a few nominated, a few were recognized. I don't think that the records are out yet, so I'm not gonna name any names. Okay, <laughs> so so talk to you a little bit uh, about the next year, the, you know, 2017 and looking ahead. If you're only losing one senior, that's a lot of returning players. You should have some high hopes again, huh? Uh, after this year in all the hype, I'm choosing to be cautiously optimistic. Okay. <laughs> Yes, but I, with all of the hard work that they're going to put in off in the off season, I'm excited to see what it'll bring next spring. Well, good stuff. Uh, you know, congrats on having some success this year, thank and you. we'll look forward to next year and having you on again, Dana. Thanks for coming up. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we'll be right back with more sports news right here on Channel 57 Sports. Let's go ahead and hit the links now. So it's always good to bring in Lori from Kestrel Ridge out in Columbus, and Lori. 
Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've talked about it before, the twilight rates that you guys have out at Kestrel Ridge. Fantastic. Uh, what's going on out there for twilight time? Well, um, we uh, put out there an unlimited golf for $22. That includes a cart and it is any day of the week after two. We also um, added a nine hole feature um, and that is nine holes with a cart for $14 any day of the week after two. Wow, that is great stuff and no wonder why it's so popular. I know you guys do some outings too. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the outing rates that you have. Yeah, uh, we consider a group of eight or more people an outing. So it could just be a group of your family, friends, whatever. Um, again, it could be any day and you uh, you get a great discount, you get our outing rate. So please uh, give the pro shop a call, make a tea time. And if you have eight or more people, you get an awesome deal. One thing that's always important with sports is getting the kids involved. Now, how do you uh, do it as far as like a junior program? Right, um, we have a really good junior program. Um, it is starting Tuesday, June 21st at 9 a.m. Um, it's really important to get your kids involved in golf at a young age. It's an awesome sport to learn. It's something they can do the rest of their life. So even if they're not going to be an avid golfer every day and they're not going to be on the golf team, it's still really important to teach them the game of golf. Like I said, it's something you can use the rest of your life. It's something you can do forever. Now we were talking a little bit off the air about how you're dressed up and ready to go for leagues. So yeah. is it too late though to sign up for leagues now? It certainly is not. No, um, uh, we uh, are, are starting our couples league here. Um, we also have a Tuesday night league that's already under way but we're more than happy to pay you know take new people um, we can add you as a sub and honestly almost every week we need subs um, we also have um, our uh, Thursday morning uh, we're gonna have a league that will be starting uh, for for couples as well now for golfers that are trying to fine-tune their games a little bit before they hit the links what kind of practice facilities do you have out there at Kestrel Ridge we have a great driving range um, it's huge um, uh, we have uh, a couple different uh, practice greens. Um, one of the practice greens has uh, a number of sand traps to practice hitting out of, which is super important because uh, there's a lot of traps out on the course. But um, we have, uh, on Wednesdays, we offer uh, bucket day. So you can get a bucket of golf balls at a discounted rate for um, $5. Um, you also get, uh, you can get a bucket of uh, chicken wings for $5 and a bucket of beer for $5. So Wednesdays wow. are bucket day. Bucket days are good. Fridays yeah. are probably pretty good for you too. Do you guys offer up a fish fry? We do, yeah. We, we serve uh, a huge buffet. Um, it's only $12.95. We serve it on Fridays from 5 to 9. Excellent. Lori, thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit the links out at Kessel Ridge. Say hi to Lori when you go out there <laughs> as well. Lori, thanks again. Thank you. All right, let's shift gears and head just a little bit south of the city right now and talk to Stoughton Athletic Director Mel Dow, who is joining us on the program. And Mel, thanks a lot for being here. And let's talk about this graduating class that just went through for you guys and the class of 2016. They've definitely benefited from the strong foundation that you guys have in the athletic department. Just how successful has the past four years been for them? Well, this graduating class was either part of or saw 20 conference titles at Stoughton High School, as well as 11 team state appearances and uh, six state finalist appearances for those teams that they uh, they were part of. Wow. Yeah, that's that's absolutely incredible. And it seems like that, you know, this past year has been very incredible. Also a diverse year of success for the Vikings. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, this year alone, we saw three teams make it all the way to the state finals. Our girls basketball team, our wrestling team, and our lacrosse team, uh, which was just this past weekend. Uh, but this year's class saw seven conference titles, and 39 individual athletes went on to the state championships or the state individual tournaments, things like swimming, tennis, wrestling, so forth. So just all-around success through all of our athletes. Wow, impressive. And always when you have a good sports program, it seems like the sports boosters are a big part about that. Uh, you know, so talk about the Stoughton sports boosters, how they made an impact so far. I tell you what, we wouldn't be where we're at without our sports boosters. In uh, just over 11 years, they've donated over $400,000. Uh, but in addition to the financial contributions that we see throughout all the different schools, uh, they help uh, feed our athletes at their study tables. Uh, they're constantly giving upgrades to our facilities and overall support in the volunteers that help run our events. Um, like I said, we wouldn't be a fraction of the program that we are without them. Yeah, we also know too that with a program like that, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that go unseen. Who are some of those people in Stoughton? 
Well, I tell you what, we're very fortunate to have an incredible administrative staff with our uh, superintendent, Dr. Ansager, um, our board of education, and our building and ground crew with uh, that's led by Cal Marath and uh, Diana Kittleson. Um, what they do is they help us provide some unique facilities. In addition to the typical gym and field to play and that kind of stuff, we're fortunate enough that we have a coach's office. We have both large and small film study rooms. Uh, we have conference rooms for our coaches. And uh, I would have to say probably one of the top weight rooms in the uh, Madison area. Yeah, the, the facilities are incredible. And I'm guessing that, you know, besides all the regular season tournaments and events, you guys hosted an additional 17 Badger Conference or WIAA playoff events. Is it because of the great facilities? You know, uh, we're proud of our facilities and the people that we have working with us. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to show off our different facilities and our people. Um, you know, not only do we want to welcome our opponents, but we want to welcome anybody that wants to come by Stoughton and see what we have to offer. Yeah, and it always seems like a lot, and a lot of work's been done in Stoughton through a lot of the partnerships that you guys have. What's the background on those? Well, our district believes in partnerships. Uh, that's between businesses, organizations, uh, uh, the different schools in the area as well. And we feel that we're stronger when we work together. So we cooperate in as many different opportunities as we possibly can. And uh, through those partnerships, we've been able to continue to move ourselves forward. And, uh, you know, we're seeing it both in the classroom and on the field of play. So we're pretty fortunate. Yeah, that's great stuff. And Mel, thanks for joining us and continued success for you guys. Thanks so much. Well, in the tennis world, the French Open is over, Wimbledon is coming up, and locally we like to turn our attention to high school tennis. And we're going to talk Stoughton tennis right now with the head coach of the boys and girls varsity team over there, and that's Ryan Reichel. And Ryan, thanks for joining us, and let's talk about that girls team. Now, the girls team used to be one that was kind of at the bottom of the Badger Conference, now is one of the top teams. How did you end up accomplishing that? Well, thanks, Rich. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we kind of started a grassroots effort. For about 15 years ago, I started a, a youth tennis program in Stoughton, and with uh, my varsity assistant, Amy Call, and uh, Howard Roloff, my JV coach, we really started to build the program up from the grassroots and started teaching tennis in the summer, and every summer we have about 100, 120 kids in the summer program. Um, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that grassroots thing always seems to be at the base of a lot of high school success. And so talk about some of the successes that you've had. Let our listeners know, you know, some of the, the success the team's had over the past few seasons. Well, you know, I think it kind of goes in baby steps. Um, I think it was in 2012, we had a girls doubles team that made it to the sectional, but didn't get out of sectionals, just missed the state tournament. Then in 2013, um, we had two freshmen, Sarah Benoit and Peyton Call, uh, make the state tournament in doubles. And then uh, in 2014, for the first time ever in the program history, we had two different flights qualify for the state tournament. Sarah Benoit in singles, and she won a round. And then in doubles, Peyton Call teamed up with Kendra Halverson, um, and they uh, also made the state tournament and won a round. Um, and they were sophomores then. And then that group of kids last year, uh, we built on those you know, two state qualifiers um, and had three. We had Sarah Benoit being the number 12 seed in the state tournament. And then Peyton Call and uh, Kendra Halverson, again, uh, made it to state and won a round again. And then our two doubles team of Sydney Johnson and uh, her partner, Holly Brixen, um, you know, got into the tournament and actually made a nice little run and won two matches and finished top 16 in the state. So just building upon year after year, a little bit of success one year and then taking it to the next year has really helped uh, our program along. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff right there. And so what are you expecting for the girls this upcoming season? Well, this season, I think, you know, we have seven of our 10, maybe even eight of our 10 uh, top players back from last year. Um, the Badger Conference, the North and South are both tough. Um, being, a, being able to compete with Madison Edgewood and challenge them for the, the conference championship is our number one goal. Um, I think this year with the, the depth of talent that we have, um, qualifying maybe four individual flights for the state tournament, two singles players and two doubles teams to the state tournament um, is really what we're pushing for. Um, but as overall for our program, if, if we could win our sectional, we should be one of the the favorites going into the postseason to come out of our sectional and qualify for uh, the team state tournament would, you know, just be incredible. And I, you know, I mean, that's obviously the epitome of any program's, you know, success. And if we could do that, that would be fabulous. Definitely seems like you're tracking, Coach. So thanks for joining us here and good luck on the season. 
Thank you. Love talking baseball and love talking Team Heat as well because Team Heat, one of these local travel teams, is really one of the best and will help you get seen by college recruiters. And as proof of that, we're going to bring in a couple of uh, former Team Heat members here now as we have Jared Nelson and Ben Workvet who are joining us right now. And gentlemen, thanks for joining us and I want to talk about college. Jared, I know you're already there. Ben, you're going there. If you guys could talk about your schools for us, please. Um, I currently attend South Mount Community College. I play catcher um, in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Uh, I'm a senior at Vernier High School and I'm committed to the University of Arkansas. I'm also a catcher as well and uh, yeah, so it's just nice getting down south and uh, being able to play in the SEC conference. I bet being able to play and practice year round is uh, always good stuff. So uh, talk about like your schools and how they got a chance to see you for the first time because a lot of people don't understand how does that whole process work? Um, well, being in Arizona, it was um, it was hard for me to get in front of my my school like um, personally, but um, it was it was good for me to send video um, down to them, and they were able to see me in action. Uh, for me, just being able to attend uh, bigger tournaments in the summer uh, and get in front of the coaches, it was kind of cool for me because uh, Arkansas didn't actually come to see me play; they came to see our pitcher play and I was catching the pitcher and they liked what they saw and they kept coming back. Uh, that was a tournament in Missouri. They saw me a couple games and then they invited me on a, a recruiting a recruiting visit and uh, fell in love with it and uh, no turning back from there. Excellent stuff. That's always good when they like what they see. And talk about too a little bit the difference between playing high school baseball and then being on a travel team. So what, what are the main differences? Um, I would say, I mean, not only just the competition is totally different, but um, it's way more competitive, obviously. Um, but just meeting new guys from all over the state or all over the country, um, it's a whole different experience, it's, um, and it's just a ton of fun. Yeah, I mean, high school, it's all the dudes that you've been playing with since Little League ball, and uh, it's just fun having those memories for high school. But then, high, but then summer ball is uh, a lot of people coming together. Uh, usually it's the select kids from high school that really take baseball uh, in stride and really enjoy it and uh, have a passion for it and so they all come out with the team and uh, it's a lot more competitive and there's a lot of better ball players in the summer. How about tips for like guys that are in high school right now that are playing ball how do they get to the next level? Um, well you obviously got to work hard towards it um, that's the most important thing um, if that's what they want to do um, and that's my biggest uh, recommendation for them is just to work hard and um, have a love for the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and quickly, uh, and Ben, maybe I'll ask you, uh, favorite moment of playing with Team Heat? Well? Uh, for me, I yeah. mean, just uh, just enjoying time with all the team and just uh, the, <coughs> the teammates and all the camaraderie is always a blast. Just meeting new friends and lifelong friends. I mean, I'll never forget it. Great stuff. Ben and also Jared, thank you for joining us here, and we will have more right after this on Channel 57 Sports.